Hello, I'm going to just go quickly through our module one, the basic facts uh, on our e-learning course, API 653 storage tank inspector is a CPD accredited course. And on basic facts, we will be discussing about how to register, how to apply, what are the core documents that you need to look at and study and discuss about the publication effectivity sheet and so forth. So how to apply for API 653, what you should expect during, during the exam day, time management during the exam and we also shall discuss some exam tips. Uh, how the API exam question developed. Now periodically a uh, question session, writing session is conducted and the subject matter expert design a question. This is checked by three other subject matter experts and they want to see whether the, the question written clearly and does the question cover uh, the knowledge that is important to the API 653 storage tank inspector. These questions are initially included in the data bank as non-scored pretest questions. And uh, this is basically to, again, do another cross-check uh, to see that how many candidates have actually answered it correctly. Was it too difficult? Was it too easy? Has it been challenged by the candidates during the exam or not? Presently, there are over a thousand scored questions in data bank and they're grouped by topics. So for each exam, you shall have 170 questions, 140 are scored, and the 30 are all those newly designed questions that are uh, pre-test question or experimental question, and they are not scored. So the scored and non-scored question are unmarked, they're all shuffled together, therefore you have to answer all the 170 questions. Out of 170 questions, 110 are closed book, and 60 questions are in open book part. Okay, the golden question of how to prioritize and plan studying for API 653 a storage tank inspector. Now, obviously, everybody has got a limited amount of time to study, so you need to invest your time wisely. That is, obviously, you should spend your study time where you get the maximum return. Almost half of the test question come directly from API 653, so that is your priority. For every hour spent on other publication, I spend two hours studying twice the API 653. So if you totally understand API 653 and don't even look at other publication, some people say that you can even have a chance of passing the exam. Obviously, we are not recommending this, but it just shows how important the API 653 inspection coder is, standard is. Around 70 to 75 questions come directly for, from uh, API 653. Uh, this is a 150 page long, so that is on average one question for every two page. The remaining 85 to 90 questions come from some 2,000 pages of the remain, uh, remaining documents in the publication effectivity sheet. That's even less than one question for every 20 page. So you can see the importance of API 653. So spend your time in the rich veins of API 653. You should to do well, you should major on major and minor on minor. So you concentrate more on high scoring areas. Our level of coverage of subjects directly depends uh, on the average number of questions you may expect during the exam. So the level of depth that we have covered this are commensurate with the number of uh, questions that you shall be expect to answer. This means that we shall cover briefly those reference stock materials that contribute to a few Exam question while question rich reference materials or high scoring areas are covered in much more detail. Now, how to plan your time? Obviously, your learning efficiency increases by having a plan and be focused. So, why spend hundreds of hours studying 
uh, randomly when you could learn just as much as or even more with 50 or 60 hours of organized approach. Our e-learning course helps you manage your time as well as focusing on key subjects in an organized and effective manner. Uh, the plan you can choose is uh, say on a 12 weeks preparation, you can study six to eight hours per week. And that would be like one to one and a half hour per day. Uh, the plan will allow you to study the city pace whenever you want and wherever you want with 24 seven access to our e-learning course. And you can use our WhatsApp line and chat line if you have any queries and we normally answer within minutes during working hours. So I'm Ash, technical queries, most doing the general queries, anything except the technical parts. I'm still doing anything on access and IT with our manager. But you can always uh, call or uh, text any of us and we shall pass down the information to resolve your issue as soon as possible or if you have any technical question you can also write to us to contact us and uh, e-learning and satisfaction will significantly increase with this discipline approach that can fit into your daily routine so do not wait and cram till the week before the exam you may still be lucky to pass the test but you will soon forget what little you have learned preparing for a certification exam is a great opportunity to really increase your inspection knowledge and experience. Make the most of it by significantly enhancing your career by getting certified. So let's see how the questions are set. The examination has two sections, open book and closed book parts. API 653 exam day is seven and a half hours long. That includes a short tutorial that's 10 minutes two hours 45 minutes for close book and a 45 minute lunch break and then you shall attend the open book that lasts three hours 45 minutes the close book examination includes such questions as the inspector is normally expected to know without referring to the codes so you should be able to answer it from the top of your head these questions are called awareness type or practical type of question so whenever you find a very definitive or quantitative statement or fact in the body of the code or recommended practices or when a statement is repeated a few times in the code or recommended practices, a closed book question may be expected on it. The four uh, basic requirements for a code, specific do and don'ts statements, important quantified statements, important definitions and well-known inspection principles will constitute a closed book question. On the other hand, where the candidate is required to refer to the diagram or formulas or tables if it always be an open book question as well as the calculation type of question. This information in the code, which is not short and crisp, there are large paragraphs or so there are graphs, tables, uh, formulas, they would normally be an open book part. And here the candidate is not expected to remember the information but should know where to find it. So document navigation through the codes and recommended practices and standards in an open book is important, especially considering that the search button is disabled during the exam. The question asking closed book part are straightforward statements directly from the code without much of modification and therefore are easy to answer or they are asked within the context of the scenario. So it's very important that you understand the concepts and have the knowledge and you know how to apply them and answer the question. Answer open book question, only one need to know where to find the answer in the code. If you cannot find the information quickly, go to the table of content. If you still can't find it, go to the list of tables or list of figures. And obviously, try to solve our mock exam question by frequenting the code. So you get the hack of it, you get the feel of where you can find that piece of information. We have highlighted the important pages, for example, exam, exam section 9. It's a thousand page document, but you only need most of the information uh, from page 170 to 190. So please use the code during the mock exam practice question, especially for calculation type. Even if it's simple, try to solve it yourself. And please uh, frequent codes and recommended practices 
so that would help you greatly during open book part of the exam and saves time. And please note that uh, it's very important to work with the soft copy of PDF because that's what you get during the exam. You should uh, obviously, again, I cannot emphasize that you should know how to navigate through that. Uh, and uh, one way would be that you look at all these codes and recommended practices and see they are, how they are structured and how they are sectionalized and structured. For example, QW means everything about welding. Please remember that study of API 653 should be thorough, while the study of ASRA section 5 and 9, they are very specific topics and specific parts according to the body of knowledge. And our e-learning is focused on the body of knowledge. And we would recommend that if you are a month away from examination, read all the codes at least once and concentrate on highlighted text in the codes. If you are two weeks away, concentrate on highlighted text and the MOOC examination provider. And in the last week, just the highlighted text and uh, flashcards. Uh, time, manage time management during the exam. So this is important that you maximize and uh, the time that is available to you. You got 110 questions and you need to answer it uh, in two hours, 45 minutes. This can be done within two, two and a half hours uh, for closed book. And for open book, you have 60 questions. And for each question on average, you have three hours, 45 minutes. And so the total will be is uh, the total uh, time for 60 question will be three hours 45 minutes and so for each question it will be three minutes 45 seconds uh, this is because you need to go to the code refer to it so make sure that you're quick in finding the relevant section in the open book always keep a time uh, which is uh, on the top corner of this your computer screen it shows the remaining time versus the number of questions you are actually presently attempting for closed book you have an average of one and a half minutes and uh, for open book you have three three minutes and 45 seconds this means that you should answer 40 questions per hour for open book part and 16 questions for closed book as a minimum to keep the pace so if you're behind during the exam, start jumping the question. So any question that takes more than a minute to answer uh, for closed book and more than two minutes to answer in say open book, just uh, flag it off and jump to the next question. Um, and then at the end, you can come back to it so that you don't miss the question that are easy to answer, okay? At the end, you can click the reviewed marked questions tab and attempt them using your field factor. Uh, keep going like this until last 10 to 15 minutes and make sure that all the questions are answered because there is no negative marking. And also you can review all button, press it and see that all the questions are answered. Anything not answered, it would have a different color normally a black color and less of blue or otherwise. So the exam stops with each section automatically once you run out of time. How do I prepare for classroom training? So this is advice is mostly for uh, people who are also opted for our classroom training, but it is uh, also useful for candidates who are bought our e-learning courses as well. Now this classroom training follows the access to e-learning. So we expect you to know uh, you have gone through the e-learning and because it's quite difficult to cover so many topics in five days. So we shall be going very fast and covering areas like NDT, WPS, welding, uh, damage mechanism, lining, cathodic protection, uh, construction code, inspection code inspection practice, pressure removing devices. And so there are so many topics plus Q and A question and answer sessions. And also we'll solve some questions and then answer your queries during that whole five days. So um, you need to, once you read the study, the e-learning, 
uh, please make a note of your weak areas or anything that you are in doubt as and then you can ask our instructor during the classroom training and the aim is to bring them uh, to an acceptable knowledge over the attendees so they are able to pass the exam i mean you paid a lot of money and we would also like to uh, we expect that uh, high exam pass rate for continued business for us uh, remember that nobody can become an inspector by just a few days of classroom training but we believe if you do the e-learning uh, uh, well enough uh, you study it the classroom training would sort of complement uh, your knowledge and would clear any doubt you might have the e-learning course is around 50 to 60 hours depending on your past experience and knowledge uh, allocate another 20 hours for uh, solving the quiz practice question and work exams and then obviously analyze the area of knowledge you're already competent and then make a list of your weak areas so as long as your weak areas are not part of high percentage exam question or high scoring areas you are safe otherwise you need to build up your strength and your knowledge to an acceptable level on those areas and we have designed the mock exam question in a way to complement your knowledge and be in line with the actual api exam question when solving a mock or sample question you need to understand the underlying reason behind the right answer and also try to understand why your answer are wrong this would help you immensely during the real exam by avoiding mistakes and trick questions so you can work the power of deduction and delete whatever is absolutely wrong by right clicking on those answers and zooming on the possible right answers remember api always ask you to select the best answer so then you might find that there are two answers that are both correct but you should always select the one that is the best one Study the e-learning regularly. Do not leave it until the day before the class and then cram for hours. It rarely works. And remember, everybody is different. So um, prepare a study plan, follow it. That's, uh, that suits you best. Uh, make notes on areas you, again, you face difficulty and be prepared to write, uh, raise them during the classroom training. And remember that we are here to help or you can always use the WhatsApp line and if you have any question, you can ask us. So, let's see about the percentage of exam question per code and recommended practice. So, you, we have got a publication effectivity sheet, which are the reference material for API 653 exam. There are four standard and codes, API 653. 650, ASME section 5 and 9. And there are six recommended practices. 571, damage mechanism, 575, uh, inspection practice for tanks, 576, pressure relieving devices, 577, building inspection, 651 and 652, lining and cathodic protection. However, all of them are not equally important and therefore do not require equal emphasis. About 45 to 50% question, are uh, asked from one code api 653 which is some 150 pages long while the rest contribute to 55 percent which are some 2000 pages as you can see here we have put the approximate number of questions versus the documents so 653 575 you receive around 70 70 75 questions 650 around 15 questions section 5 ndt around 10 to 15 questions um 571 around 8 to 10 questions damage mechanism asthma section 9 welding engineering and api 577 welding inspection around 15 question 5 651 and 652 lining and cutting protection protection around 8 to 10 question 576 and safety each one uh, is around five to six questions now, API course certificates, there are 5653, this one, piping, 570, and 510, pressure vessel. Uh, this course certification, they have uh, a few documents in common that are 571, damage mechanism, 576, pressure relieving devices, 577, welding, 
uh, inspection as well as admin section 519 NDT and welding engineering WPS, WPQ, PQR. So approximately 30% of question for all these three core certification are same. So most of the inspectors intend to uh, get all the three certification because once you pass one of them, you already covered one third of the other. The API examination, including API 650, I have three times a year and each exam window is three weeks long. The exam window for 653 for 2023 are March 10 to 31st, July 4th until August 4th uh, and November 3rd till 24th. So you have to choose one of these three weeks window at the time of applying for the exam. The pass rate is around 55 to 60% and Prometric is subcontracted by API to hold the computer-based examination. After registering and getting the API approval, you can book an exam date at your selected Prometric test center, and they have 3,000 almost three centers across 160 countries. And the deadline to get the API authorization email is two and a half months prior to the uh, selected test window. For exam schedule and application deadline, you can click on this or go directly to API ICP. API is now offering remote proctor exams through Prometric remote testing platform, Pro Proctor, beginning in February 2021. All non-practical API exams are available through Pro Proctor. And how this works is that at the time of application, you ask for remote proctoring or remote exam, and uh, you select a slot, uh, the, the time, the date, and uh, when you're scheduling. So if you want to read more about remote proctoring, you can click on this and you'll find out how that works. To get API approval attending 653 exam, you need to file the application form, and you can go to API ICP and apply there or you can click on this link here again and then go, it takes you directly there. Then you upload your qualification because there, as a prerequisite and your experience, provide two references and pay the fees. $940 if your company is not an API member or $730 if the company is API member. Unfortunately, API does not grant uh, individual membership, so it should be your company. So not many companies, they are API member probably around 4,000 in the world, so most probably you end up uh, paying the full fee of $940. The prerequisite, uh, you can again see in API website, the experience plus education should be occurred within the last 10 years. And uh, you can look at the table below to see that if you are, can be qualified or not. So as you can see here, if you have got a bachelor degree, one year of experience is enough on supervision of performance of inspection activities uh, on 653 on tanks. If you have two year, um, two year degree or uh, associate engineer, um, then um, it would be two years experience, uh, which one year should be on supervision or performance of inspection activities and high school is three years. Again, out of which one year should be on supervision. And if you have no formal education, you can still attend this example, why did you have five years of experience out of which one year should be on supervision of performance of inspection activities. So once you provide your references and pay the fees and apply for the exam, API would send emails to your references. It's always better to sit with your references so they can verify, uh, you know, they're not confused and they can, you know, verify it quickly um or uh, talk to them or at least sit with them um and it just takes a minute to do that so once the that is done the api will send you an authorization email and with a link to prometric where you can go there and select the slot you want the date and if you are attending in person you put your postcode and tell you the closest test center to you or the remote proctoring, you can just select the date. The three weeks exam window previously used to be two weeks. Uh, so remember that once you do select the three weeks window, um, you are uh, committed to that, that window only. 
So for any reason, if you want to reschedule, it's as good as failing the exam because you have to pay $300 and reschedule for the next window or any other window that you select. So make sure that the window you have selected is the one actually you intend to attend the exam. <laughs> and remember that if you do not attend the exam between allocated a three week window for any reason whatsoever, such as being absent or no show at the exam date, failing to book a slot, non availability of a slot in the preferred test center because Prometri works on first come, first serve basis. So it's very important that as soon as you receive your email authorization, you select a slot and book it. Because once that is gone, then you might not be able uh, to book at the, your preferred test center or failing to book an available slot in another test center is as good as failing the exam. In this situation, you need to request a reschedule, um, the same way as if you fail the exam and pay a 300 US dollar fee. The application deadline is around two and a half months, uh, but because of this problem, you know, selecting the slots and all that, uh, and you might not find a, a test center close to yourself, we always recommend that you do three, four months uh, or, uh, before the exam date, the window, not the, uh, the, the deadline. I mean, don't go by the deadline and do it just as, you know. So this is especially important for API core exam 653. For other exams, non-core exam, it's normally it's easy to do that. We have got 3,000 Prometic test centers across 160 countries. So as again, I emphasize that, that schedule or schedule your exam immediately after receiving your exam authorization notice email from API. If the seat is not available, try a different date or another location. Uh, up to 29 days before you selected the slot or the window, you can still change it if it is there is subject to availability. And then if it is less than between five to 29 days before your exam window, uh, you have to pay a $70 fees, again, subject to availability to change the slot. Time limit for passing the exam. Uh, from your initial exam, you have one year to pass the exam. Uh, and that means four consecutive time you can um, attend the exam maximum if after one year still you don't pass the exam you have to get uh, uh, fill in a fresh application for initial exam again all over again and uh, pay the 940 dollars fee for every rescheduling is 300 dollars so remember that to uh, schedule your exam with the closest promising test center as soon as you receive the api authorization one of our trainees on API 653 received it, his email authorization seven months before the exam, but he just attempted to select the Prometric only two months before the test window. So he couldn't find the test center closest to himself, which was London. So he had to fly to Amsterdam to do the exam because that was the only uh, slot which was available. But otherwise, he had to wait another six months to reschedule for another slot. It's a day-long uh, exam, so uh, to find the location and the, the, the favorite one and the test center is might be difficult if you are too late. And because they work on a self, first self, uh, first come first serve basis, the exam normally starts at eight thirty. Make sure you reach the Prometric test center or you're behind your desk if you are doing remote proctoring, remote exam is half an hour before the scheduled time. If you reach um, or you report 15 minutes after that, they may refuse to admit you and uh, treat it as a no-show. That means you have to pay $300 and reschedule. During the exam, they would ask you, before the exam, they will ask you for photo ID. It should be government issued photo ID. Uh, and uh, it should be valid. It should be a picture, have a picture and your signature on it like a driving license and or a passport. I mean, they should be Latin characters. So they will uh, check your, they do ID check, ask you to sign in. 
if you are in person check you with a metal detector ask you to turn up your sleeve and trouser check your pockets look at your reading glasses to ensure it's not does not have any camera video recording and ask you some security question date of birth email address and you cannot carry anything with you except a bottle of water no ornaments are allowed except a wedding ring and prometric shall supply you a couple of uh, a four size papers and pencil for taking notes plus a simple calculator obviously you cannot have this uh, pen and paper and calculator during the remote fracturing or remote exam uh, you shall be uh, in a room you are not allowed to leave the room without the invigilator we shall be watching you through the camera on your desktop and you, uh, there should be nothing on the table you have to turn around the desktop show the table there is nothing there nobody is allowed to enter or leave the or enter the room during the exam and you're not allowed to leave the room without the invigilator's permission so it's the same rules apply regarding photo id and security check remember that if you don't produce a photo id uh, or if it's not valid then you shall be refused entry and it's treated as a no show even if it's a government street photo id one of our candidates uh for 653 uh, had a driving license which was expired he was refused entry he returned half an hour later with a valid password but by the time it was too late prometry said as a result he had to pay the rescheduling fee of 300 dollars and attend the exam six months later so we always recommend that as a plan b you have two government issued photo id and make sure that they are valid there is a tutorial that before the exam and there is a link here so you can practice uh, practically this tutorial tells you um, how the icons work during the exam and it takes 10 minutes or if you end it earlier and then uh, if you don't end it and the 10 minutes pass it will end automatically and your first uh, part of the exam which is the clues will start automatically uh, so there are, i got some several useful uh, version uh, provisions there like you can flag off the question you can right click on the answer uh, and uh, uh, so you strike them off by doing that uh, so you can narrow down to the possible right answer zoom in and then select those answer you can review all questions once again or review the flagged off question and uh, obviously the exam ends automatically when the remaining time showing in the right hand corner of this uh, uh, screen you uh, reach a zero or it's up there's no negative marking you should roughly answer 70 percent of the question correctly that's uh they normally bring it on a scale so that it, the level of difficulty is standardized across all the exam windows or a set of questions exam question and you should have a minimum of 400 on a scale of maximum 500 no negative marking therefore answer all the question at the end again click review all or review incomplete question and see that you have answered them api 653 exam sequence api core examination had two parts close and open parts book uh, first you answer the close book part two hours 45 minutes for 110 question and after that you will have a, a break of maximum 45 minutes uh, where you can leave the building and you know go for a lunch or a break or, or use the locker that they have provided you after the the break you should start the second part of Hongo and need to answer some 60 questions within three hours 45 minutes of allocated time that is three minutes 45 seconds per question the board search is disabled so you should know which document and also which section you should look for each question in subsequent video shall explain how you could navigate between documents to find the right answer, chart or formula that you need to solve an open book by question. The 45 minute break, once uh, you end the break button or uh, the, you finish the second, uh, the first part, which is the close book, or once your time is up, your break starts automatically. So this means that you have maximum of 45 minutes. We advise you to go uh, back to your desktop or report to the Prometric Test Center at least five minutes before your 
close book starts because at the minute the 45 uh, the brick has been up uh, your exam of closed uh, open book would start automatically regardless whether you are behind your desk or not and uh, one of our candidates went for a break so he was lost on the way by the time he came he was half an hour late and that half an hour late was taken off his three hours 45 minutes uh, open book so he had only three hours 15 minutes to answer the open book part unfortunately he passed so remember that uh, the 45 minutes break is not like you you can go there anytime it, 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 it would once it's consumed or it's spent then your crow, uh, open book would automatically stop uh, I'd like to give you some tips on time management during exam. Uh, first, remember that if you leave the examination room for, say, using the toilet, drinking water, or you need to take your ID with you, report to the security outside the examination room and sign out. On return, you have to go to the same, almost same initial security check. They will check your ID again. And during all this time, the clock is running. And uh, Remember that your exam is not concluded until your time is up or when you press the end exam button. So for any reason, you are not effectively attempting the, the answer, the questions, the time is clicking, right? So uh, make sure that you use the, your time wisely. And uh, if you still need to go and get some water or use the toilets, or if you want to Put a comment on the caption uh, of the question this all this time the time is ticking and it's coming off your time okay again number of questions as we said 170 140 are scored 30 pre-test not a score they're shuffled together you have to answer all of them and we have explained the reason for a non-scored question which are pre-test questions and uh, as soon as you finish the book part the second part you receive an email notification so the minute you leave the exam you receive an email notification and it is either a primary pass and or a primary marginal which is too close to call or a primary not pass the reason they say primary because they are scaling this and the final score comes six to eight weeks after the three weeks window it might take another six to eight weeks to receive the certification and the wallet card and normally it is earlier than that if you fail, wait for the final score to come in, so then you can reschedule and pay the $300. And then you should receive this uh, exam authorization approval once again, within two to three working days. They don't need at the rescheduling to verify again your references or anything else. Just pay $300 and apply for rescheduling. Once you receive the email authorization, then book with Prometric as soon as possible.